Members, item 4 on the order paper is the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn, and in conjunction with the Business Committee, I have given leave to Mr Alex Easton to raise the matter of removal of loading bays at Main Street and Bridge Street in Bangor. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes. I call Mr Alex Easton. Point of order, Ms. Bradley. Guys, um, I would just like to, out of my continued respect for this House, I would like to place on record my apology for not being in my place at question time earlier today. I call Mr. Alex. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, this is potentially uh, one of the last adjournment debates ever uh, to take place in this current Assembly. I would thank the Business Committee and yourself for agreeing for this to be debated this evening. In Bangor, um, we have three loading bays, one in Bridge Street and two in Main Street. These loading bays were created out of the design of the Public Realms Works in Bangor. This project was delivered by the Council in conjunction with the then Department for Social Development. Department of Infrastructure as custodian of the public highways provided the necessary legislation to allow enforcement of the waiting and parking restrictions on the new streetscape which in truth only came into force in October of this year, and not according to the Assembly uh, question, which claims that the 180 people that have been fined so far over the last 12-month period for parking in these three loading bays, um, because it hasn't been enforced for 12 months. The truth of the matter is they have been only operational for over four months period, so the Department needs to tell the facts and not distorted facts trying to cover up for the mess that they have created by these three loading bays and the amount of parking tickets they have created. The loading bays outside Minaris and Bangor were never wanted. In fact, I held a meeting with Council and Transport NI last year with local businesses who were complaining about the waiting restriction times of an hour which were needed to be back in place as this was affecting local business and had objected to the loading bays but they were held to ransom by Transport NI because of their objections to the loading bays and were forced to withdraw their complaints to the loading bays to get the hour-long waiting restrictions back in place. And that was very unfortunate. Since these loading bays have now come into force, four things have happened. There's been a loss of another seven car parking spaces for on-street parking, which has already added to the loss of the car parking spaces uh, that were taken out through the design of the public realms work. This has resulted in loss of trade to the already struggling traders in Bridge Street and Main Street. It has also led to mass confusion to shoppers and drivers who don't understand why they cannot park in these parking areas. There is also the poor signage leading to further confusion. There are also the red coats who are queuing up with great zeal ready to pounce on poor unsuspecting shoppers parking in these loading bays where they have always parked and always shopped. In Bridge Street, all parking has been taken away because of the loading bays and the public realms work. All the businesses are struggling, and one uh, business in particular is now in the process of considering closing down altogether because of the loading bay. And it's very unfortunate that the minister could not be bothered to be in his place today to listen to these serious concerns. So far, £16,000 have been issued in fines, a nice little earner for the Minister's Department. Wonder, one wonders, is this the reason why these bays were put in place? Because let's look at the facts. Even when these loading bays are empty, lorries and vans are still not using them and are still double parking uh, to leave their parcels. I have pictures to prove it and I have witnessed this on many occasions. These bays do not even make sense because there are loading bays behind the vast majority of shops and properties in Main Street and Bridge Street. If the Minister was here, I would be saying, Minister, this is damaging businesses in Bangor. And to prove it, uh, at a committee meeting held in Belfast City Hall for, the, Department of, uh, for the, the Committee for Infrastructure, I asked the Belfast Chamber of Trade representative, Mr. McElroy, and I said, um, I said to him, you raise the issue of loading bays, which is a big bugbear of mine in Bangor. It is causing huge confusion for people who want to park in them, and you find that experiences here, do you agree that it's affecting trade? I do not know by how much, but it is certainly affecting trade, and people are not being able to park in the city centre. 
Mr McElroy said, I agree wholeheartedly on all your points as a resident of Bangor and as someone who carries out business in Belfast. Our offices are on Great Victoria Street and we are now down to having two freely available car parking spaces outside a 10-storey building that houses in the region of 250 people carrying out their businesses and that is uh, for visitors and clients. That is largely because of the loading bays. To concentrate specifically on loading bays, the issue is not only the loading bays themselves and a number of them, but the times in which they are enforced. They are frequently enforced at times when there is no loading in these stores. If the Minister was here, I would say I would hope for once that the Minister would listen because businesses from Main Street and Bridge Street have come together to sign a petition to remove those loading bays. I also understand that the Council are now deeply concerned at the impact of these loading bays and the issue has been raised at Council. In an Assembly question, uh, the Minister recently said that there was uh, arrangements that there was going to be a period, a settling in period, and his officials would review all aspects of the Council scheme over the next few months. I was going to ask the Minister today would he suspend the loading bay fines from today and for the loading bays to be reviewed immediately and for a review to be undertaken with local businesses and the council as a matter of urgency for those loading bays to be removed before it is too late for businesses in Bridge Street. I have here tonight the petition that I was going to give to the minister afterwards, but obviously the minister for infrastructure does not care less about the parking problems in Bangor. He obviously does not care about the businesses that are being affected in Bangor, and he obviously does not care about the people of North Down. I have asked the Minister repeatedly to come to visit North Down to discuss these issues, and he has refused. So tonight, in what is probably a very important um, debate, unfortunately we don't have a Minister here who cares less and wants to try and resolve these differences with us by working with us together. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call Mr Alan Chambers. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, the... Sorry, the member has up to 10 minutes. Oh, thank you. Um, Mr Speaker, the, uh, the problem of, uh, of car parking uh, in Bangor um, and, and the issues around it have been compounded by the public realm work uh, that was undertaken over the last couple of years in Bangor. Uh, and because of uh, a reconfiguration uh, been done uh, on the various car parking spaces, the legislation that covered those uh, lo uh, parking spaces at that particular time was set aside and became obsolete because of the fact that of the reconfiguration of the car parking spaces, so we actually had a period of about a year and a half where there was no legislation uh, in relation to car parking in either Main Street, Abbey Street or High Street in Bangor. And it meant that you could park your car there, although there were signs said you could park for only one hour and you, you had to go, you couldn't come back within an hour. That actually wasn't the case. And people very, very quickly cottoned on. And in fact, disappointingly, some of the people who cottoned on to it were actually some of the people who would be designated as tra traders. Uh, and some of their staff cottoned on to it as well, that they could park all day and they weren't going to get a ticket. And I know that this caused a tremendous strain on businesses, particularly in Abbey Street and uh, High Street, where the shopkeepers, the retailers really did depend on a turnaround uh, to maintain their footfall, and they lost that. And you could see cars and vans that carried delivery of some of the businesses uh, in that area parked all day. So that, that, that was an extremely disappointing situation. And the department and the minister had to be really hounded uh, to push that legislation through. And I sat on the council uh, when the committee that dealt with it pleaded with them to bring the legislation forward, uh, and it was about a year after that before he, he brought it forward. So there was a lot of dragging of, of, of heels. Now, the wind of, uh, from the public realm work, they, certainly when they spoke to the council uh, prior to the, the public realm work, they told us that 
we would only be losing a handful of car parking spaces. And I went out in good faith and sold that to people. That, uh, and people were saying, oh, we're going to lose a lot of car parking. No, we're only going to lose a handful. The minister of the department has told us that. The reality was, uh, Mr. Speaker, we lost in the town 28 car parking spaces, went down from 162 to 134. Uh, thankfully, the disabled parking spaces remain constant. There was 10, and they retained 10. But one of the things that they did was they introduced these um, loading bays. Now, as a motorist who uses Bangor, I do a lot of business in Bangor uh, on a daily basis, one of the infuriating things, and all the motorists that use and the Bangor, the Main Street and the High Street will identify with this, one of the infuriating things was the double parking of lorries. And the red coats totally ignore that and have always ignored it. And if you say anything, they tell you it's not a parking offence, it's an obstruction offence, and it's a matter for the PSNI, and they won't interfere. And the traffic progression, what it does to the traffic in the town, it actually causes tailbacks to half a minute. The effects of it are of a, parked, a, a lorry park double, the effects of it are felt half a mile away in the town, uh, and they do it with impunity. So I have some sympathy with the minister uh, when he decided that these loading bays might be a good idea, and he introduced them. Uh, the reality is that they have been a disaster. They're not being used. Uh, they have eliminated, um, he says, uh, six spaces, and replied to a question to me, but in fact, we counted with seven spaces, not that that's a huge uh, difference. Uh, but they are not performing the function uh, for which they, uh, which they were placed there. And uh, Mr. Easton's correct. I've seen it as well. I have the photographs as well of lorries parked, still actually double parked, adjacent to the loading bay. So they're, they're completely uh, ignoring the fact that the loading bays are there. Um, but it still remains a problem. If we take the, 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 these uh, loading bays away, we're going to have to come up with uh, some other method uh, of some traffic restriction to remove uh, the, the scourge off the lorries at double parking in the town. And the tragedy is that a lot of these businesses, uh, Mr. Speaker, actually do have back entrances, loading bays around the back, and there's no reason why the lorries uh, can't go around. And maybe if some legislation was brought in that the red coats could actually intervene when lorries double park, it might actually help if, if the lorry uh, drivers started to get uh, parking tickets, although I'm sure uh, they would be the next one that would be asking us to uh, raise a, a, a petition if that were uh, to happen. Um, so the, um, the problem is, uh, as well, is that I know it's easy tonight to stand up here and, and, and say that, you know, the minister should, should cancel this from today and take it away from today. Uh, the reality is there's legislation and there's laws that were passed and put in place. And as we've seen over the last couple of days here, you just can't click your fingers and change the law. Um, and the legislation that is in place in relation to these loading bays did go out to public consultation. And one of the questions I would have wanted to ask the minister, and uh, I share my colleague's disappointment that he's not here, He's, he's been pretty good at uh, German debates, I have to say, in the past, but disappointed that he's not here tonight, uh, because I would like to have asked him uh, if, in fact, uh, did any of the businesses at the time, prior to these loading bays going in, did they actually object? Uh, and I'm not sure that there were any objections that went in. And as well as that, they had to go through the planning process. And again, I'm not sure that there was any objections uh, went through uh, the planning process against them. But again, that's maybe people didn't realize uh, the impact. Maybe people thought they were a good idea. And uh, I'm sure the minister must have thought they were a good idea. But the reality is it proved to be a very, very bad idea. But again, in um, response to a question that I asked uh, the minister, I asked him, had he done this, had he introduced these with the full approval of the local uh, borough council and they were worked in very close partnership uh, with the, the, the infrastructure minister's department 
in relation to the public realm work. But the, he did sort of indicate, I, I think there was a bit of playing around with, uh, with words, and he said that uh, the, the council had carried out uh, all statutory consultation uh, with the caveat that it was through the planning process and that the council had more or less given it their approval. I think what he was saying was, yes, the council had approved the planning permission as is their statutory duty as it went through. No doubt the planning committee would have had no reason uh, to turn it down. But the minister's clutching at that as, as his proof that the borough council actually support uh, the Loden Bays, uh, and I don't think that is the reality. And I think if the Borough Council were asked uh, the direct question, they would tell you that they were not party uh, to agreeing to having these loading bays. And I think uh, currently, I'm sure that a lot of the councillors uh, have been getting their ears uh, bent, and certainly I've been getting mine bent, not by the traders, not by the traders, by the people who are getting these tickets, because people even with blue badges are getting the tickets and they're ringing me and they're distraught about these, have to pay these fines. And it really is, it's, it's a money tree, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it really is a money tree. And you drive down the main street any day, you'll see cars parked in it. Um, and you say to yourself, are these people, do they not see the signs? Are they? But they are parking and they are getting the tickets and they don't like it. Uh, so I don't think there's an overnight solution. Uh, but I think that we've got to at least put a marker down. I think we're putting a marker down here tonight, Mr. Speaker, uh, that we don't like them, the people don't like them, the traders don't like them, and the public representatives don't like them either. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Called Dr. Stephen Farley. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, and I thank Mr. Eason for uh, tabling uh, this adjournment uh, debate. Could I just declare at the outset that I have a, a close uh, family member who has unfortunately received uh, one of the penalty notices uh, for parking in the bays. Um, the, the issue, just to pick up from uh, Mr. Chambers in terms of his points, this is not something that would have entered into the public consciousness, um, even in terms of a formal consultation process. At best of times, we have difficulty getting people to engage with those, but people who are overtly or assumed to, to, to be most overtly affected by these things tend to be those that respond to it. But most of the, the motorists who tend to fall uh, into this would not have been aware of this. They would have seen a situation and a location where they would have previously parked uh, and assumed that they could continue to park and not necessarily have understood uh, the change in terms of the rules and regulations uh, that uh, persist in that particular regard. And while technically we can point to highway codes and other pieces of legislation and things, I'm not sure if the average motorist, especially those who have maybe passed their test a long time ago, uh, fully understand the, the different subtle differences between um, one type of parking bay versus another type of parking bay, uh, and what is a loading bay or what's not a loading bay. Uh, and there is very little indication um, in terms of signage, for example, uh, that would uh, give people warning of the, the changed circumstances uh, that persist in that uh, particular context. I don't, that, that said, think this is somehow a, a massive Sinn Féin plot against uh, Bangor or, or North Down, but I would certainly put on record my disappointment that the Minister isn't here to listen uh, to, to, the, to the debate. Uh, I am somewhat confused as to what the Sinn Féin's position is vis-à-vis -vis the Assembly at this stage. And they, they are saying that they're carrying on their duties as Ministers, uh, but at times uh, the evidence uh, in that is, is patchy, to, to, say the, to say the least. I think what this does show is the the, 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 the difficulties we have sometimes in large departments in understanding the very subtle circumstances that pertain uh, on the ground in terms of how decisions are implemented uh, and uh, operationalised and their lack of flexibility in actually acknowledging or responding when things perhaps are not uh, working as clearly. And that probably is an argument for seeking to consolidate a lot of the very basic powers that, that uh, exist uh, at the local government level, especially when we have the opportunity for joined up thinking in terms of the knock-on implications of one particular intervention, say, on uh, car parking, on other aspects of what's happening, and particularly in the uh, commercial life uh, of, of, of a town. 
Uh, in that regard, uh, I certainly would encourage um, both uh, Mr Dunn and Mr Easton, if, uh, in terms of this debate, to encourage their colleague, uh, the outgoing Minister for Communities, to, to certainly rethink what his position around debt regeneration powers, um, because that uh, Withhold, the, the holding of those from councils is, a, is a, an example of taking things in a direction that wasn't actually planned and actually does make things more difficult uh, down the line in terms of that particular, particular uh, direction of travel. Um, parking as a whole is, is, is of a premium um, in Bangor Town Centre, as is, is undoubtedly the case in many other uh, locations. And we have what is in effect a disproportionate impact from the creation of these parking bays, parking bay, uh, sorry, the, the, these loading bays, loading bays that aren't actually used for the purpose um, intended, um, not least in terms of, of lorries continuing to, to, to double park. But even if they were to be used by lorries for, 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 for loading, that will only be for a fraction of the day, and otherwise you have what is in a sense empty space that is not being properly utilised to allow a free-flowing uh, exchange of, of, of vehicles um, and, and in turn providing much needed custom uh, for a lot of, of town centre businesses. So we have a, in essence a, a lack of flexibility and a lack of understanding of, of, of local circumstances. The public realm um, process as well, uh, uh, from which this was part was something that was welcomed uh, by uh, local businesses and other, other stakeholders. But a lot of the comments I hear um, would include that it hasn't actually a, brought uh, uh, further benefits into the town in terms of other regeneration, because for other reasons and other factors, that regeneration hasn't moved to the next step. But at the same time, um, Throughout the residential parts of the town, and I'm sure this is reflected in other parts of Northern Ireland, there is huge frustration at the state of the pavements, where there's weeds um, over, overgrown, uh, there are paving stones that are still um, broken, there are health and safety hazards, and there's a frustration that we have a lot of investment in the town in terms of the look of the street infrastructure, but that has not been matched uh, elsewhere, and that has an impact as well on people's, people's quality of life. So I would encourage, in closing, uh, the department uh, officials, at the very least, who hopefully will be reading the transcript uh, of today's debate, to reflect on the comments that, that have been made uh, by, by members, and if these are essentially operational decisions uh, uh, that th they can, act, can action without the direct input of a minister, and hope that is indeed the case, that they can come to reflect on what is said and perhaps have a, a more flexible approach or indeed to, to, to forego uh, enforcement uh, pending uh, some wider uh, discussions of what is a, a better use. And obviously, those discussions should be taking, taking place in conjunction uh, with local representatives, not just MLAs, but uh, the, the local council. Thank you. Call Mr. Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I too welcome the opportunity to discuss this matter and commend my colleague Alec Easton for bringing it here this, this evening. I think we're all very much aware of the, the public realm work when eight, eight million pounds of investment through DSD and INS, which is now the Department of Communities, um, in partnership with ours and North Downborough Council, completed that work. And in the main, I do think it has been a success, and I know there are some reservations about it, uh, but it has certainly changed the environment of the town, which was tired, worn, and uh, needed uh, an uplift. And with the, the new public realm, uh, it has made major change to the town and it has uplifted the environment. I think the environment is, is much brighter, cleaner and sharper with the, the improved footpaths, the pedest new pedestrian crossing, the street furniture and the, the street lights throughout Abbey Street, Main Street, High Street and Bridge Street. So I do think in the main it has been a success and it's something um, I think we all welcome. And as a former councillor, like a number of other members here, uh, we were involved with that and uh, I do say that there was a, a steering group, and I know I served on it in some other councils as well. Uh, on that steering group, there were uh, trader representatives, there were community groups represented, TNA w was represented, DSD, and, and, and other bodies. And of course, there were consultants. There's always got to be consultants there getting their fee. 
but uh, many people raised this point about the loss of parking bays throughout the town. Mainly High Street was always a concern because of the need to, to park and, and to, get, to try and, and increase the footfall. Bridge Street again, there was this argument about Bridge Street. In fact, at one time they were going to make Bridge Street one way. There was going to be one way traffic through it. A number of us argued strongly against that because I believe it would have been a disaster. It would have affected the whole traffic flow within the Bangor Town Centre. So um, that fortunately didn't happen. But there was always this argument about increasing the, the, the space for, for the public, for the open space to be increased, for, uh, where we could have more of a, a communal feel. And yes, in theory, that sounds good. But against that, we lost car parking spaces. And we lost, uh, I think, a lot of the character of the town as well in relation to accessibility for vehicles. And the people in Northern Ireland still like their cars. They still like to, to drive in as close. And I'm sure my colleague down there in the corner, uh, Mr. Agnew, will agree totally with me. We still like our cars to drive in as close as possible to our shops, to our homes, and to wherever we're going. And it's, it's a culture. It's a culture. I know some will argue to change it, but we look at Belfast. People don't go to Belfast anymore now. And I do think it's positive for towns like ours and Bangor that people will come there to shop because of the, all this madness about bus lanes, which hasn't worked. But th th there is a balance, and I think the balance here is wrong in relation to, to parking bays. Uh, the, the, the need is great for local access for cars and, and getting in right into the town centres. And my, my colleague has made the point the traders are under pressure. They, they do, and we're all aware of it, they pay large amounts of rates. And they're, they're in competition with, with the online services, they're in competition with, with other businesses. And anything that deters people coming into town is a negative. And this is a major factor. And I support what my colleague uh, Alec Easton has said in relation to the vehicle bays. The vehicle bays, again, were argued against, but we as elected representatives were not listened to. But we would have a, a loss of approximately seven car parking spaces with, with, the, with the vehicle bays. And prime spots, they're in prime areas, right adjacent to the major shops that are there trying to survive, trying to compete with other businesses. Mr. Speaker, I support this motion. I, I urge the Department, of, which is now Transport NI, to review what the work has been carried out. I think it's important. I would urge them to continue to carry out the important maintenance throughout the, the uh, North Down area. We still have a lot of outstanding work on the A2. We debated that issue some months ago. We really do get a poor service in relation to maintenance from Transport NI throughout the North Down area. We want to see future investment. We want to see the area improve, making it one of the best parts of North Down for people to live, work and enjoy themselves. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call Mr. Stephen Agnew. Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to start by inviting Mr. Dunn to, to also acknowledge that in North Down we love our trains. We have an uh, award-winning train station in Bangor, and indeed the train brings in much tourism. <laughs> uh, the, the train brings in much tourism, um, some of it unwanted, admittedly, at times, but uh, uh, highly valued um, in, in North Down and in our town centres. Listen, I, I appreciate the, the member, Alex Eason, bringing this issue forward. As, as a resident, uh, he lives uh, just on the edge of the town centre. Double parking is, is by the, the sort of the lorry, delivery lorries is, is the bane of any driver's existence when trying to get through the town centre. It's infuriating. But as has been highlighted here today, uh, it, it, this problem hasn't uh, been effectively alleviated um, by these loading bays. We have a wider issue of parking in general. And, and North Down, and the, 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 the Loading Bay issue will, will be particularly frustrating to those who have been, been caught foul of the fines. 
Whether we have them or not is not going to completely alleviate our parking problems in Bangor. Six or seven spaces will undoubtedly help. Um, six or seven extra spaces will undoubtedly help. But we do need the, the wider issue resolved. And I think it's, it's worth making that point because Queen's Parade um, project, I, I suppose, continues. There is an opportunity to look at parking in general in the town centre and bring a long-term solution. But in the short term, this is, this is something that can certainly be fixed quicker than Queen's Parade. Um, <laughs> if, if indeed uh, the, the Queen's Parade issue is, is, is ever resolved, I hope it will, I believe it will be, but uh, I, th I think it's a question of when rather than if. So I think that's what we need to look at. We need to look at a strategic approach to, to, to parking in Bangor. We need, do need to look at the, the transition um, towards more low-carbon forms of transport. Um, our trains have been a great success. What has, has been less successful is, is getting people to shift on the buses where the train line doesn't run. But uh, as I say, I appreciate the, the, the proposal this evening. Uh, it is regrettable the minister isn't here to hear it, and I do hope his officials are, are listening on his behalf. It's something that needs to be re-looked at. I think this was a, a, a well-intentioned move, the introduction of the loading base to, to, to uh, assuage those like me who are frustrated by the, the double parking. Um, but it hasn't solved the issue, and, and we need a different solution. Members, that concludes the debate. The Assembly is now adjourned.